I have two sons and what I say is that the education, the changes in the world start in the home. And it's us ladies who have the power to make the changes for the rest of the world. I'd like to tell you a story. I was told many years ago, that is by my pupil master, that the best way to get messages across to your juries and to your judges is to tell stories. So I'm going to tell you a story. About three and a half decades ago, there was a young lady. I knew her very well, a Turkish lady, born into a Turkish household here in the UK. She was a young girl with two brothers. She was the sandwich in the middle, one older and one younger. She had to decide what career am I going to do? And she said to her mother, Mummy, what do you think? And her mother said, well, let's think about it and, and we'll, we'll come back and talk about it again. So she thought, fantastic, Mummy's going to help me decide. She came back to her mother and said, I've also done some research and I've found this thing called a secretary. It sounded very exciting because what she had read is that the secretary, in fact, is, keeps control of the boss. And I'm sure um, my colleague here will tell us accordingly. And the mother said to this young girl, but dear, you're not clever enough to be a secretary. And the poor girl went off and did whatever little unclever girls did. And she continued to cook in the kitchen and help with the housework and make sure that her brothers were well catered for. And of course, she could never even do that right. Then one day, her brother, the older brother, only 19 months between them, sat down and said to her, you know, I know everyone says you're not very clever, and I know that everybody says that what you should be doing is making sure that you marry the right man and that you become a good and proper mother and housewife. But I just can't put my finger on what it is. But every time we speak, every time we have a conversation, how on earth is it, he says to his little sister, that I feel inadequate? How is it that you make me feel that I know nothing? That young man grew up to be a consultant surgeon and that young man grew up to be prosector of anatomy at Oxford University. And that young woman had a sliding door moment when her brother said to her, no matter what everybody tells you, because this was 35 years ago, whatever, whatever anyone says, look into yourself. And I'm hearing myself repeat words that my friends here had said to you. When that young girl had a sliding door moment, it was then that her journey started. And the young girl who could not be a secretary, who was incapable of rising to such heights, today stands before you as the first woman chairman of a chamber of commerce. I have been approached by numerous countries to set up their chambers of commerce modeled on my own. When I took over as the chairman of the chamber of commerce, we had very few members who you would want to write home about. Today, my membership, when you add, in the three years that I've been cha uh, chairman, when you add the gross turnover of my members, it is more than the GDP of con some countries. This young lady, years later, I'm the deputy head of international law of the biggest chambers in the UK. The work that I deal with is in the billions. My smallest case is about 30,000 pages. I cross-examine neurosurgeons, pioneering ones, and I send them back to medical school just for fun. <laughs> and that's only half of the story and the journey 
that this young girl who was incapable of becoming a secretary, that is only half the story of the journey and where she ended up. So when I say it is us ladies who have the capabilities of changing the world, we design our own destinies. And again, I'm repeating what my own friends <laughs> before me have said. We design our own lives. Tenacity is, again, something that my friends have spoken of. If tenacity was not engaged, I would have quit long time ago. In fact, perhaps, it, it, not tenacity, it was more likely a husband who had a choice. He could either have me at home arguing with him or he could send me back to work where I would argue with the judge. <laughs> he chose to encourage me to go back to work after we had our first child. And I can't emphasise how many times I've wanted to step down, how many times when I've appeared before a judge, and this was some years ago, women didn't go to the all-male bar. It is the, the bar, the barristers, the bar council. This was a place in the preserve for white middle-class men. We called it pale, male, and stale <laughs> when we then, in the bar council, I was on the Diversity and Equality Committee, we then went on a drive to try and help our ladies and ethnic minorities come to the bar and to succeed and to rise to the same heights, if not further than our pale, male and stale. <laughs> In fact, we've succeeded because when I came to the bar, as I've said, virtually no women. Now we have 50% of women come to the bar. 50% of women who step up and take the challenge. We went on overdrive and we succeeded. When I was speaking to my friend Esra early, early on, there was something that she said to me, and, uh, and it rings so true of the bar, as no doubt in banking and other such professions. We can encourage women to come to these positions, but we have a great difficulty in retaining women once they have children. And at the moment, we are on a drive to help improve and find ways so that women could remain in the positions and rise higher. Whereas we have 50% women come to the bar, we find that by the time they have hit what we call pupillage, that's the training contract after the um, bar school, we find that there is a dip. It's a small dip, but for some reason there is a dip by the time they hit their training contracts. But alarmingly so, by the time they hit the age when they should be Queen's Council, only one seventh remain. And that's not good enough. And that is why we will continue to strive and we will continue to encourage. I am one of the more senior women at the bar and were it not for a husband who literally pushed me out the door but also encouraged me to do what I do, I couldn't stand here today and tell you that you can do it too. There, we do need encouragement. What we know at the bar is this. When a man makes an application, my first degree was psychology, I should add. When a man makes an application for a position, a high position, he will say, I have ticked at least five of those boxes out of 10. I'm ready to apply. When a woman seeks to put herself forward and seeks to put herself out there she will say, I have ticked nine out of the 10 boxes. Perhaps in another year, I will be ready. Confidence is such a big factor. Lean in, this is the theme for today. 
What I call it is feel the fear and do it anyway. I remember the first time that I stood up in front of a judge and I thought that my heart was beating so loud that it was going to slip out of my chest and slap the judge in the face. <laughs> and I've found that as I looked around me and my male colleague's hand was shaking next to me, I knew that he was also feeling the fear, but he was doing it anyway. And so I said to myself, I can do that too. And I watched and I learned. I did model myself on those that I thought were the best. And out of my 22 years, in the last 10 of those, or thereabouts, I have lost two cases. And I've done an awful lot of cases. And there are very few of my male colleagues who could come across me and win. I think that Turkish win says a lot for itself. <laughs> and I think the win stands for more than women international <laughs> network. There may be some connotations for the word network, but if we did not network, if we women said, well, I will not network, again, I would not be in the position that I am. It's because I was networking. Putting aside my law, I became the first Turk in 800 years to become a common councilman, an elected member of the City of London Corporation. And that was because I put myself out there. In fact, I was putting myself out there for my law only to find myself pulled into other directions. So ladies, if I have a message for you today, it is feel the fear, just do it anyway. You'll amaze yourself by what you can achieve.